So, yeah, so I'm Javier Perez and the head of data at Carto. And in this session, um, I'm just going to make a brief introduction on, on what we do and then highlight some specific projects in the area of how we exploit uh, human mobility data in the location intelligence uh, framework. So for those of you uh, who don't know us, um, Carto is leading the location intelligence uh, industry in a way with a team of more than 150 engineers, geospatial experts, and data scientists. Uh, the company started in 2008 in Madrid as a data visualization boutique that then in 2012 was turned into a technology company. Um, and then late 2015, after the Series B, we moved headquarters to, to New York. And now, yeah, sorry. And now, yeah, we have offices in Madrid, Seville, New York, and Washington, and just opening one in, in London. So our, uh, the ambition of our technology is to allow organizations and businesses to uh, discover new patterns by exploiting geospatial data. And we allow this by following five uh, key steps. So the first one is about data ingestion and how we integrate with the databases, data warehouse of uh, our customers. Then it's about data enrichment. So how we allow those users to enrich their data with third party data and open, and open data. Then it's all about how you analyze, how you run your spatial analysis on top of the platform using the combination of your data and, and the data you have used for enrichment. And then um, how you can build visualizations and solutions with the results of those analysis and then how you integrate that into the operations or as a um, enterprise software solution in your organization. As you probably know, if you're familiar with GIS, uh, the applications are endless uh, in many industries and for many use cases. This is just uh, some nice logos in the area of uh, governments and cities. So we've been working with the city of Mexico, Madrid, Barcelona, San Diego, New York, and many others. And from this experience, um, what we have seen is that there, there is still a lot of organizations that base their decision the, their decisions using census data, which by no doubt is a very powerful source of information. But as you know, it only gets updated very so often. So with the past of the years, what you do is, is to project the last census to the present year. And this projection with the pass of time is, uh, is get, uh, gets less uh, accurate. So if we look uh, at some major economies in the world, we see that census data is in average around seven, eight um, years, years old. So then let's take a look also to, to this fact that probably resonates with, with many of us. So there's 90% uh, of the people um, has the mobile phone within one meter reach during the 24 hours uh, of the day. So it's with us when we work, it's with us when we do sport, when we watch TV with, I mean, we do uh, double screen and it's very close to us even when we, when we sleep. And this is just growing. So if we look, there's uh, 5 billion people using mobile devices uh, at the moment, which means that in the last five years, the traffic that they have generated has uh, grown 18 fold. And if we look in 2021, it was expected that there's going to be 11.6 billion uh, connected devices, which is by several billions um, more than the people that is projected to be in the, in, on earth by, by that time. So there's a vast amount of data that is being generated uh, nowadays. So we have as I said mobile devices, IOT sensors, satellites, cars, but um, all this data to really become useful, it needs to be put into, into context. And one key core component of all this data is the location because uh, as we like to say in, in Carto, everything happens somewhere. So now let's imagine that instead of those organizations, those companies, instead of basing their decisions using seven years old data, we enable them to use data that is updated on a monthly, weekly, daily, or even in real time. So with this ambition uh, is why in 2016, we created an alliance with Vodafone 
to put in the market uh, Vodafone Analytics. Vodafone Analytics is um, is both a data product and an interface, uh, an interactive web uh, application that I will explain with more detail uh, in the in the next meetings. Minutes, and and as you can see here, this is um, the city of Madrid that has been gridified in cells of 250 by 250 meters, and data is for a month that is aggregated by weekday or weekend and different time rates, and the user can analyze the amount of visitors that were in uh, each of the cells, and then also look in aggregated uh, manner all uh, which were their um, origins. So how is this built? Um, this uh, starts by, well, it's a combination of Vodafone and, and Carto. So first is Vodafone that has uh, all the network events. They first anonymize the user information before it actually gets into their big data team. Then they apply the opt-out removal for the, those users that have uh, selected opt-out in their settings in some like Vodafone account. Then they aggregate the data both uh, especially and temporarily, and then they extrapolate it to uh, represent not only the Vodafone sample, but the overall population. And when this um, uh, happens, then it gets into the Carto stack, Carto platform, and, and powers the solution that you've seen right before. So you can see Carto as um, full stack for location intelligence, so it can run cloud uh, and on-prem. It's actually, the, the stack is open source. Um, it has connections to third-party services and third-party data, and then starts with a geospatial database, that, well, that is geospatial by, by design, then a set of APIs that allow you to query the database, and then a set of libraries to build the, the visualization that and appear then in the form of different solutions that can be custom solutions that we build for a specific customer and a specific use case, or solutions that we have put directly into the market like Carto Builder or Carto Frames. So Vodafone Analytics, um, we, we, when we started, we decided that we we're gonna focus on four uh, key uh, use cases, and I'll try to speed this up and focus on the tourism and the one more related to uh, urban planning. So the first thing that we did with Vodafone was to design the data model. And that is a data model, mo model that is flexible enough to answer this uh, set of questions about always aggregated and, and, and extrapolated, but about the, how, the who, so how many visitors and what are their, their key demographic um, attributes the when, so when these uh, visits in this place um, happen, what the average duration of these visits uh, and so on. Also the where, trying to correlate the Vodafone data with location of specific points of interest like the venue for, for a concert. Then the how, about how the movement uh, happen within the city and then trying to also understand the, the why. This is uh, another another example. Uh, this is a project that we did for the government of uh, Andalusia in in the south of in the south of Spain. So what you see here is uh, for different months, uh, all the, so data um, aggregated at a municipality level. You can, for example, compare on the map different months. So we see that in the coast there were actually less visitors in September than in August, which uh, makes sense. You can filter the, vis the, the visitors by their uh, visitor profile from commuters, tourists, residents, and also by age and gender. Uh, well, you, you see all the widgets there that, that I explained. And then what, I'm going faster than the video, but then you can also see all, that there's a model with charts that you can see all the, also the um, historical uh, evolution for your different deliveries. So all this is so all this is very good, um, but we think that's actually still not uh, not enough. And and really, what we wanted to do with Vodafone is, uh, and with uh, any with our customers and uh, other partners, is to move not only to move from visualizing data on maps to actually analyzing data on maps. 
because it's not it's not really the same to to answer the the where. So where do visitors gather uh, in the city? To try to understand the why. So why they they go there and what are the mobility patterns uh, uncovered in in those movements and how you can exploit to better run um, a city. For this reason, maybe you saw this. If, if you follow Carto, you know you can uh, do it. Um, last week we launched. Uh, Carto Frames, and Carto Frames is uh, our, uh, our own Python package uh, that allows you to exploit the analytical and visualization capabilities of Carto without leaving the Jupyter uh, notebook uh, environment. So it allows you to explore your data, to enrich uh, your data with data that you have licensed through our data observatory, then analyze and then build visualizations that then you can share within your uh, organization. So part of it is actually open source, so you can download and, and play with it uh, in your local. Um, that's very, very nice. So, and actually one of the projects that we built uh, using Carto Frames and the data observatory is what uh, we call the well, fusing multiple data streams to find twin areas between different cities. So basically we gridified Madrid and Barcelona and we enrich those cells with data points from uh, different types uh, of data and computed a similarity score um, to try to understand which areas look more uh, alike. So here uh, you can see an, an example when where we start in an area in Madrid uh, in, in the street of Goya where is residential with a high household income profile of the residents, but also has a lot of commercial activity. So you can see that scores quite high also on the number of visitors and the number of transactions. And here what, what we did was to start adding data sets from different data categories and then narrow down what areas are more similar to Goya in in Barcelona. So you see at the beginning only with demographics, you see the center, but also some areas like in the, if you know Barcelona in the Saria neighborhood, there's also like uh, wealthy people. And then when we start adding more points, ended up more into what is the Champlain Esquerra, uh, which if you know, kind of make, make a bit of sense. So this is one project. And now also to, for, for the last uh, two minutes, I also wanted to show another application. Well, uh, this is more exploratory at the moment. So this is actually also data coming from Vodafone Analytics. In this case, the cells uh, are not from 250, but to 10 meters by, by 10 meters. And what we are analyzing here is the average speed and the dominant direction of, of the movement. So here without, I mean, we put a, a base map, but you can see that just for the data, you can understand actually the movements uh, in the city, so which streets uh, move like horizontal, vertical, uh, where there's more people walking versus more people uh, using using cars. So here, the the style is actually the speed. We can do the same, but styling the direction. And just by looking at the data, um, we can see in the like well, actually how the traffic uh, move. This is still uh, quite work in progress, and we're trying to see how we can uh, better productivize this as part of the Vodafone Analytics uh, portfolio, but that's something we're spending quite a lot of time at the moment. So I think we did it on time. Um, well, thank you very much, and I'm gonna stay around then for questions and, and then for the rest of the day, so thank you.